Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. As you'll notice, we're back in Photoshop again. And the reason we need to do this is going to become apparent a bit later on in this episode. But for now, what you need to do is take your image like this and we're going to create a new layer by clicking on the new layer icon like this. And we're gonna unlock the background layer and we're gonna make that transparent. Now we're gonna select our main layer, our new layer here, and we're going to right click on the gradient tool and get our paint bucket. And we're going to choose black like so. And we're just gonna fill that like so. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna add a layer mask to this and we're gonna select our brush tool like that, make it nice and big like this in our mask. And we're just going to change our opacity down to about 25% and our flow to about 50% and we're just gonna dab that a couple of times like that. And then we're gonna drag the overall layer opacity right down so that it's barely visible. I'm gonna say about, I'm gonna go with about 17%, 20%, something in that ballpark like this. And now what we need to do is we need to go file, export as PNG and we're just going to go back out of our icons and go into images in our UI folder and we're just going to call this motif.png like that and we're going to save that like so and then we're going to jump back into our code. Now that we're back in our code we're going to go into our main UI.rpy like this and we are going to say if and we're going to say if notification which you remember we created that variable in the previous episode which is in our defaults and defines so if you aren't sure of the spelling or if you want to make sure it's exactly correct just double click it copy double click it and paste and then we're going to say add no even better we're going to say image button and we're going to say hover UI if dot PNG idle UI or slash notif dot PNG and the action is going to be null action. Cool. And there's a good reason for that. Basically, what we're going to say is that we're going to use this screen in our say screen. So when dialogue appears on the screen, all of this stuff is going to appear underneath it. However, if we've clicked on an item on the screen and it's created an, a dialogue on the screen, we do not want any of the buttons to be able to be clicked on because that could cause all manner of issues. So what we're doing is we're placing an image button which covers the entire screen that's going to make it impossible to click on anything else, but it doesn't do anything when you click on it essentially making the entire screen visible but not interactable. Now we come into our script.rpy where we've already got one click type statement and we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it there like so. Now we can go into our classes.rpy and we can check on the click type flag there which is object with a capital O so when we come back into our script rpy we can now change that to say that so if click type is object if we've clicked on an object then we need to do something else so we're actually going to say call expression and then we're going to say ui return and that's what we need to do for that and let's just reinvestigate why what's going on here so in our clicky screen up here We've going, we're going to loop through all of our objects in the game. We're going to check if we're in the correct location, we'll move on to the next stage, which is checking if the item is active. If it is active, then we're going to put a button on the screen, which is going to be the icon that we've created. And it's going to, when we click on it, we're going to set type to the click type. So for example, if we created a button which we didn't necessarily want to have as our um, as an object we could have it as a nav button perhaps appearing on the screen somewhere like we could turn a door into a navigation button 
then we can simply do that and then when it does it, it returns on the clicked which we have to find in the classes so we've got clicked there it's the code friendly name of the button followed by the string edge of the chapter and the sequence numbers and then it simply calls that label so there we need to make one more change to our code the first thing we want to do is come into our defines our default clicks so if we go into item click and click on default clicks what we now need to do say pound sign or dollar sign or whatever string notification notification equals true like that copy that and we're going to put it in there as well happy days so anytime we want the text to appear on the screen as a notification rather than as a new dialogue scene then we're going to set this flag as true so we're going to come back into our script here at the very start of our loop we're going to say notification equals false that just means that it's automatically set to false in case we are calling something else cool so now what we need to do is come back into our screens.rpy which do we have up here yes we do and as you can see in our choice menu we we said use main ui now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our say screen that's the input screen there is our say screen like that and we're just going to simply say if notification use main UI. In fact, what I think I'm going to do, just to make sure that there's no chance of any errors, I'm going to come back into our main UI and I'm actually going to take this out of here. We are going to actually add the if notification in there and instead of creating a button we're just going to add the overlay in there and that should actually work just with the image added over the top so we don't have to mess around with image buttons and all of that and it may prevent any clashes with the overall screen system we also need to remember to put a return on these otherwise it's just gonna sit there doing nothing fat dumb and happy forever so I think what, yeah, I think that's about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly just run this code to test it. Run that like that. Now when we go to start, we jump to the garden. And as you can see, all of our bits and pieces are there. We click on that. You see the screen dims ever so slightly and it says this is a sofa. And then we have to click get out of that like so. Happy day. So we know that that is now working. So we can populate this with as many images or as many icons as we want, making sure that we fill out the correct details in our clickies append settings in our classes. So for every object you create, you create one of these, put an icon in the correct place. Now, I know that a lot of you are probably going to take this information and run off and start creating loads and loads of icons. That's amazing. Do it for definite. However, do not use this method for creating characters because we're going to have a separate character screen that deals with that. Um, it's going to operate largely on the same principles, but there will be some subtle differences. So yeah, feel free, take this code, go and create as many items in your game world as you want. You should now have sufficient information from this series so far to add as many locations as you want to add their icons to the mini map and then add items to the game world so you can actually start creating your own little universe right away hope you found that useful guys let me know what you think in the comments below until i see you next time take care bye bye